Then you've got to step back to repulse the monkey. And we're just saying, like, if you grab my hand and come straight in there, I don't need to worry about that. Just hit there, okay? Um, if he blocks it, so I go there, I should be able to try and hit in that way. It's hard for him to stop it because of the force direction. But if he stops that, that's coming in, that's coming in, anything like that. I'm always thinking of centre line on this particular bit here. If he's grabbing my wrist again, I can pull free and hit, right? Now, if I want him to come in, I can grab his head there. Pull. But if I, if I want him to come in, what I actually do is slightly stiffen up. So if you grab my wrist, if I actually slightly stiffen up on this and then drop it on top, he'll tend to get pulled in. I'm not being pulled in myself because I dropped the centre of gravity first and used the hip. If I didn't do that, this, this kind of thing happens. We both go like this. We're both crashing in the middle. I want to control the situation. I want him to be off balance and I don't want to be off balance. So if I pull in again, if I go here, I'm in control. Even though he has unexpectedly hit that, what I want to do is adjust his foot to keep my balance stable. I push down there and he'll go, okay? Yeah. So that step back reports the monkey, which is repeated four times in the 12 and 8. And then we come to the one of the most important parts of Tai Chi. Grasp the bird's tail contains. This is actually, pong is part of any of the moves, that's like bracing out, but it's not stiff, it's not like this, okay? It's just feel that you're expanding out. And like you're holding out. So if you push on my hand, this is too floppy, this is too soft. On the other hand, push again, he's not got me trying to push back. He's actually, he's actually got the superior position because his whole body can walk forward and my body isn't in a strong position. If I pull that there, it is, okay? But uh, if you just walk forward, say, keep pushing, I can't hold him off. The best thing to do there is you brace out so you get this is bracing, not pushing back. Bracing is where you just hold out enough, you walk forward, to give you a chance to redirect their energy. So that energy is going that way. Okay. So <clears throat> that's pong, where, you, where you're just bracing out enough to keep them out long enough for you to redirect their energy. Then you've got uh, pull is blue. And then you expand out like this, like that. That's called G. This is Lou as well. This is G as well. This is Anne. Long story behind that, I'm not going to all that. <laughs> the rest of the bird's tail, I mentioned Pung Lou, G, Anne. And um, pulling is this br bracing out, it's not pushing against, it's just holding out long enough to you, for you to redirect the ears. If you just push my hands anywhere you like, I've got to stick to him, I've got to keep pushing. I've got to stick to him and redirect him so that I get the advantage. This is pinning. So if I push down the trap, his foot here is in trouble, okay? I'm using this elbow against this elbow. That hand is stopping him sliding out, okay? And coming in like that, okay? That kind of thing. So that's pump. Uh, and then uh, if you punch, say, this is Lou, like that, which is shown in grass the bird's tail like that. If I'd gone back at him just there, that presses him down. So uh, if you punch again, please. I pull here. Well, if he hasn't gone down, which he hasn't at the moment, I can press that way. Okay? So that way. Pull, <coughs> press, or squeeze. It's called. Okay? There. There. Then this is called Ammon. You actually can stick your bum back a little bit on this bit. I always say, don't stick your bum back, stick your main main point back, which is opposite the dantier, the uh, gordosis there. So you, you can, you, usually you curve like this, because it makes it very strong to push back. You're loading the energy in your spine and body. But because you, you're directing the force downwards instead of to one side, it's going to hit your groin if you're not careful, so it's not a bad idea to stick your bomb back. So all these rules can be broken when you know what's happening and you realise perhaps a good idea to move your bomb back there. Okay, so what can happen there, 
lots of things, I suppose. I've just gone here. This brush in here, like that, okay? Um, if, if you pin my arms so they're crossed, that's, that's one way of closing somebody up. I use that to, to seal somebody off. I often do that, okay? Now, you're not trapped at all in actual fact, because if you just move back and punch back with your elbows, it opens up, okay? So it doesn't matter how he pins my arms, you pin many arms like, like that, okay? If I move back like that and pull, it's at that point I could have done that the way the It's the elbows and the hips that you pull with here. Now, if, if he um, comes right in, let's say he's trying to pin me. I've got to here, I've got to here, and then he tries to pin me, so just pin those against the there, like that. Then if I stick my bum back here, he can't actually ram it into my own groin, and also it makes him open, and I can headbutt in here, okay? So there's lots of ways of doing this uh, movement okay. in, in self-defense. Then you can push them away. So if you've got them off balance, you pin my arm and say, how do you like this man? And then if I can get him off balance like that, I'll show my toe that. Okay. So if you throw off my toes, you're not a bad thing to do. You can stop me from moving back. So he, he's got a slight advantage there. But uh, if, you, if you make the uh, six toes, it's called, Six because two curved arms, two curved legs, curved spine in this dimension, and a curved spine in this dimension. So you, you draw the sternum in, drop the shoulders forward and down. That's the six bones. So you've got the curve this way, then this way, like a letter C, this way. So one is like hugging a tree or wrapping around a barrel. The other one is uh, curved like a letter C. That's two bows in your spine, and then both arms are curved, both legs are curved. Then you get a powerful push. The next move, number eight, is single whip. You go into it from here, you turn it. Strike up with a diagonal, circle around with the left, then do this with your right, then go to the left, like that. Okay. So, <clears throat> One of the things you can do with it is if Duncan grabs with his right hand on my right wrist, then I'll do it slowly to start with. What I need to do is from the down to the end, it's circle like that. I can just make him let go. So you grab my wrist. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> that is fast, isn't it? <laughs> it's a lot faster than that. Yeah, it's faster. Okay, so to slow that right now, what I need to do is he grabs my wrist is from the down to end and through the hips and the spine, circle and turn my palm out whilst grabbing his hand here. And I'm pushing up with my thumb to get it wedged up against my wrist here, the back of my hand, the lower, lowest, deepest part of my hand here. And I'm going to rotate it this way. Then I'm going to face him and, scoop, and just bow. Okay? And it's so painful, we'll smash the kneecaps if you're not careful with this one. If I actually did it the first time like that, where I actually face it first and do that, the tent would throw the knees down on the floor. On this, it should be all right, but on a concrete floor, it wouldn't be. That's twist wrist with stone gold.